Los Angeles, the city of angels, entertainment capital of the world, and it's where I currently live. Today, however, we are not in Los Angeles. In fact, we are about 7,292 miles away from it. I packed my bags, took a 14 hour flight, and came to the Philippines for one reason and one reason only to eat food. Bruh. Last night on Twitter, I asked you guys what some of the best local specialties here in the Philippines were, and you guys definitely did not disappoint. There are about 619 responses of people telling me what I should try here. So today, we're going to go through all of these suggestions, and I am going to eat my way through the Philippines. Huh? Sounds a little bit weird, but... I know we're not really like a food channel here, but every time I go to a new country, I just have to try the local cuisine. So let's get started and see what we have first up on the menu. Okay, so the very first thing I actually want to try is called taho, and it is a kind of a traditional Filipino like breakfast, snack, dessert. I'm not really sure, but it is basically uh, silk tofu, and inside there is like tapioca pearls as well as syrup, and it's commonly sold in the daytime, actually in the morning, around like 6 a.m. It's currently 12 o'clock p.m., so I'm not sure if we can find any, and there's not like any stores that sell it because you have to go around and look for like the street vendors, but I mean, I'm just gonna walk along the street. Hopefully, I'll be able to find some, and if not, I don't know, I'm gonna try my best, but yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to also Jollibee later. Uh, I'm gonna see if we can get some of that authentic Jollibee in the Philippines, but yeah, that's the plan for now. We're gonna look for some Taho and hopefully we'll be able to find some, so let's go. Okay, so we've been walking around looking for Taho. I asked some of the <laughs> security guards if they knew where it was. Uh, sorry, excuse me? Yes. Uh, do you know if there's like Taho around here? Taho? I do sell up in the mall. Oh, in the mall? Second or third floor. Okay, guys. And they looked like they looked at me like I was crazy, but apparently we can find some in the mall. I don't think it's like authentic, but hopefully it's actually there. Let's see. Guys, I found it. Uh, can I get a oh, regular hot tahoe? Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god. You know, I was starting to think this actually didn't exist. We were walking all over the place looking for this, but I guess it's actually in the mall. So we have some regular uh, hot Tahoe. It's supposed to be eaten hot, but it's like 95 degrees right now. Um, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Guys, this is literally just dohua. Dohua is like another traditional Taiwanese snack. This is literally it one-to-one. -one. <laughs> I mean, it's good, so I'm gonna devour this thing now. Okay, see you guys in a bit. Out of everything I tried today, Tahoe is definitely up there on the list. It was just the perfect amount of sweet with the tofu to balance out the syrup, and the pearls added some much appreciated texture. On a side note, I did end up searching up the relation between Taho and Dohua, and apparently Taho is just the Philippine version of Dohua, so I don't know. I just think it's cool to see the you know connection between the cultures, but overall Taho gets a solid 8 out of 10 from me. That was a nice little snack, a nice little breakfast, but next up we have an actual meal. We are currently at Manam Comfort Filipino, and uh, I am going to try one of the traditional dishes that the Philippines has to offer. There is a lot of exceptional food in the Philippines, but one dish that you guys really, really wanted me to try was none other than adobo. 
If you don't know what adobo is, it is this marinated meat dish made with soy sauce and vinegar, well, of course, and meat. It is a staple in traditional Filipino cuisine. However, there seems to be a little bit of disagreement in the community between adobo as well as one other dish called sinigang. I don't know, the whole thing apparently is that people argue over which one is more traditional, which one represents the Philippines better, and which one, I guess, tastes better. Honestly, I don't really understand the whole beef between the two. No pun intended. These are two completely different dishes with completely different tastes, but I am team adobo. The adobo just tasted like how my mom used to make, you know, braised pork back at home. It was nice, it had a salty finish, and it went great with some rice, but the sinigang on the other hand, I don't know, it was just way, way too sour for me. I know that's supposed to be like the whole thing about Filipino cuisine, it's like supposed to stand out, it's supposed to have these bold flavors, but just wasn't really my thing. On the side, we also ordered some kare kare, which is a Filipino stew dish made of peanut sauce, and I'm not really too big of a fan of things made with peanut sauce. You know, I tried it, but probably would not be adding that to my palate. Overall, adobo gets a solid 8.0127. Eight from me. Yeah, uh, other than that, Sinagong and Kare Kare, I probably would not be back to try again. Well, maybe I'll try it again, but I don't know. It was just all right for me. I give that like a six out of 10. As you guys can see, we are now back in the hotel room. We had Tahoe already, we had the adobo and sinigang. However, there is something that we have yet to try, which is going to be the Filipino snacks that you can get just, you know, around the place. Every country, you know, has a convenience store and every country has its specific snacks. I actually came here for Conquest, uh, the convention, and that let me meet some of you guys. And you guys passed off a bunch of snacks to me here, which I am going to try right now. As you can see, we have some sweet corn snack. We have, uh, Bangus sizzle, sizzle, sizzlings. It's a fish cracker or something. Happy less grease peanuts. <laughs> there is a giant pocky stick, which I'm pretty sure is like half broken already. I'm sorry. We have, you know, some salt and vinegar ribbed cracklings. We have hi ho uh, crunchy cracker nuts, as well as some strawberry candy, some chocolate nut candy, uh, flat top candy, shrimp chips, or I guess prawn crackers here, as well as potato crisps. And of course, last but not least, the pancit canton, which is an instant stir fry noodle snack. I think this is going to be the very first thing I try to make here. The hotel actually does provide a kettle. Now, I don't actually have a cup or a bowl, but I just need something that holds water and have uh, this <laughs> on. Oh, there it is. It's going. In you go. I'm reading instructions, guys. I'm reading for once. What does it smell like? Oh, whoa. Is this right? This doesn't seem right to me. Okay, then apparently I mix it once our noodles are ready. Ooh. And then we're gonna take a little bit out. I wish I had two forks. Okay, you know what? We'll do, we'll do this. Oh my God, what is this DIY cooking? I'm so sorry. I will be right back. I'm gonna go drain this. One minute later. Oh, let's do this. Ooh. And then we give it a good stir. Oh my God, that smell. This is the final product. Here's what it looks like in all its glory. And I guess time to see what all the hype is about. Three, two, one. That's good. That's good. I don't know if it's just because I'm hungry, but wow. It's like, a little bit citrusy. I'm not sure if that's like the flavor of this. There's like a slightly sweet flavor as well. This is this is really good. I think this is uh, actually calamansi, calamansi flavor. Calamansi. Clemency. Isn't that what Dunghan says? Clemency. Never heard of it. I think out of everything I've eaten today, this is probably my favorite. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like whenever I visit a new country, I can always count on the local snacks to be extremely delicious, and the Philippines was no exception. Right off the bat, I'm going to say that the Pancit Canton was by far, by far, my favorite thing that I ate that day. But the Happy Peanuts and the Oishi Prawn Crackers were honestly not that far behind. Many of these snacks had a very bold flavor, 
but this is actually something that I quite liked when it came to small snacks, like chips or other small bites that they had. Maybe it's just because I really love snacking on foods, but man, this really did hit the spot. Honestly, I kind of wish that I had brought more snacks home, but overall, I give these snacks an 8.75, which I think makes it the highest rating of today, and the Pants at Canton gets a 10 out of 10 for me. That was a lot of snacks. Honestly, all of them were very, very delicious and I would eat them on a regular basis. Even though we just, you know, ate a bunch of snacks, for some reason, I'm still just a little bit hungry. So I think it's time that we go get dinner. Made it. I've been to a couple of Jollibees in America, but let me tell you, this was by far the largest Jollibee I have ever seen, like literally in my life. Not surprisingly, it was super packed in there and I mean, I can understand why. The couple of times that I've had Jollibee, it's been pretty good, honestly. So I'm going into this with extremely high expectations. We're at Jollibee. Of course, if I come to the Philippines, I have to try the national treasure, Jollibee. And I mean, I've had Jollibee before in the States, but it's supposed to be like better here or something like that. So I don't know, right off the bat, I'm already a little bit disappointed though. Cause like, look at the size of this chicken. I got the one piece chicken joy combo meal with the Jolly spaghetti as well as a uh, Jolly chicken sandwich or something like that. I mean, the sandwich looks good, but this piece of chicken is kind of I also have, you know, the peach mango pie, I had to get that. I heard this is very, very good. Uh, I love it in the States as well, so I guess we'll see how it tastes. <laughs> okay, Jolly Spaghetti. The flavor's there, but it's a little too sweet for my liking. It tastes exactly like it does, like, I don't know, in the US. Um, I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. This chicken actually does taste better than it does in the US, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, chicken, eight out of 10 for me. Like it looked a little bit dry, looked a little bit disappointing at first, but the taste is there, it tastes good. I feel like one thing that really disappointed me with my Jollibee experience was just how much people hyped it up. To be honest, I'm not even sure what I was expecting about Philippine Jollibee, but people were treating it like it was literally the holy grail. I mean, it's definitely good and I do enjoy eating Jollibee, like I said earlier, but to be fully honest with you, no, it was not life-changing. Looking back on it now, I'm not even sure if the chicken in the Philippine was like honestly even better than the one I get in America, or maybe I was just hungry that day, or maybe it was just like, you know, the local branch that had better chicken that day, but who knows, maybe it's true. Maybe, you know, Philippine chickens are just built different. Overall, I would give Jollibee as a restaurant, probably like an 8.69 out of 10. It's what you expect, it's good, but yeah, sorry, not life-changing. The next dish, however, is something you're gonna wanna see. Atsu, say hi. Why am I saying hi? I do not consent to being in this footage. I do not consent to being in this footage. All the Hi, uh, can we order in ring uh, dining, please? Uh, can I get the blackened chicken healthy bowl? And then can I also get tomato and burrata cheese? Anything else? Uh, and can I get a Caesar salad with grilled chicken, please? Grilled gambas or smoked chicken, sir? Uh, the grilled chicken. Uh, and then can I get one of the Wagyu uh, beef burger, please? Anything else, Mr. Chanbao? Uh, and then can I get one of the Filipino mango cheesecake, please? Uh, and then the Hello Hello. Uh, that'll be it. For this winter, it will take 40 minutes to prepare one dish prepared with a delivery plate that we figure out. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chanbao. Mr. Chanbao. Mr. Chanbao. Thank you, Mr. Chanbao. 
Press the speaker right here. Guys, what makes a cheesecake for it's been a long day and we've had many, many great things to eat. However, you know we have to finish this off with some dessert. One of the most famous summertime desserts in the Philippines has to be Halo Halo. And basically it is this, you know, treat made of shaved ice, uh, evaporated milk. Evaporated milk, is that a thing? Condensed milk? Milk of some sorts, which is not great because I'm lactose intolerant, but the one I ordered at the hotel had ube flavored ice cream, red beans, and other flavored jellies in it. And let me tell you, if that sounds good, that's because it was. Like I said earlier, I am a huge fan of sweet things. Fun fact, if you didn't already know that. One thing I will say about the Holo Holo is that the shaved ice was a little bit more like a ice block. I couldn't really like, you know, dig into it with the spoon and I couldn't really eat the ice until it melted either. But to be fair, I'm sure that's probably just a thing with the hotel kitchen rather than Halo Halo in general. So overall, I'm gonna give Halo Halo a 9.00001 on the menu. Hello everyone. Oh, two hats, what the fuck? Hello everyone. Uh, unfortunately, our Philippines food tour does indeed end here. Uh, I had one more item on my list, which was balut. If you know what it is, you know what it is. Yeah, unfortunately for balut, uh, the sellers only really come out at night. And unfortunately, it has been thunderstorming for the past few hours. So currently 11 o'clock, that's about when they start coming out. But unfortunately, looks like we will not be able to get it. I am heading home tomorrow morning. I have an early flight, so gotta get to bed here. But yeah, if you did enjoy that, please do consider liking the video, subscribing. And you know, I always do enjoy visiting new places and getting the opportunity to do this. So first and foremost, I do want to say for those fans, viewers, and for you guys who did show up at the convention, uh, I want to say thank you so much for your support. It was super heartwarming to see all of you there and I'm so glad I got to meet so many of you. And to those who I did not get to see this year, I am so sorry about that. I do wish there was more time. I do wish I had the opportunity to meet more people, but hopefully we will meet again in the future. So I appreciate your support. Thank you for all the suggestions. Thank you guys for making this video possible. Possible. And thank you guys for making, you know, it possible for me to come out to the Philippines in the first place. So love you guys. Thank you so much for all the support. And as always, have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Peace.